Hello everyone, uh, I would like to welcome you to my first session. Uh, we will start uh, first session with uh, NFHS 5 data uh, which has just come out recently. Uh, this is to understand the problem of undernutrition in India. Okay, so let's understand what uh, you know, what data shows us. Uh, this is NFHS 5 data, uh, National Family Health Survey. Okay, and um, basically here uh, in the first slide, what you're seeing is the age-wise distribution of nutrition indicators. Okay, so age-wise, in a sense that uh, what we have done, uh, whatever data that uh, NFHS5 had, we have kind of distributed among the uh, different age groups. Okay, so here in um, you have uh, months, zero to two months, three months, four to five months of baby, six months. Okay, and here you have a percentage on a y-axis. So here we have taken three indicators. Uh, for example, uh, blue is your wasting, uh, your yellow line, yellow bar is your underweight and red one is your stunting. Okay? So we want to kind of show that what NFHS 5 showed is basically between 0 to 2 months of age, you have almost 30 percent children who are wasted, okay? almost 30 percent. Uh, 30 percent children are underweight and uh, about say 28 percent are stunted. That means right at birth and then in the first two months almost your one third children are not doing well okay one third children that's a huge lot of number now when you you know that in first two months what matters mother's nutrition during pregnancy and your breastfeeding okay that means our mothers are not getting enough uh, nutritious uh, rich food so babies are of course grown uh, low birth weight and also even if they are probably growing uh, well but because probably the latching or the milk transfer is not good from mothers to babies okay and that's why do your you know you need to have a good amount of catch up growth in, and maximum occurs in first two three months of age you know and that's not occurring okay so not only there is a tremendous amount of growth faltering occurring in first couple of months but uh, also growth catch up is not occurring okay so this is very very uh, important to understand that first two th first zero to two months of age a uh, lot of these babies are you know not not doing well uh, looking at three month age data, uh, again if you look at your wasting, wasting from say around 29% has gone down to maybe 26%, uh, not, not much decrease in wasting, okay. And your underweight pretty much stays same, okay. Uh, there is little bit of stunting, uh, decreasing which is good. Uh, but then let's go back to again four to five months of age and then look at the, again the wasting has not decreased much, uh, underweight has not uh, decreased much and stain, stunting stays as it is. Okay? And that's the same trend that you see in uh, six months of age uh, babies also. So what we are seeing is that in first six months of age where there should be tremendous amount of uh, growth catch up occurring, there should be uh, almost zero growth faltering occurring, should be occurring but probably we are getting lot of growth faltering and very poor growth catch up. Okay? Now this again up to six months is all breastfeeding, okay? nothing else. So, uh, of course, milk transfer is a problem. Uh, probably many mothers <coughs> are giving uh, uh, cows milk and babies are getting diarrhea. Okay? So, we have to also consider that uh, starting from 7 to 12 months of age, now this age group, it, this is where there is introduction of complementary feeding and mother is learning how to introduce complementary feeding and how to increase dietary diversity and how to increase the frequency and the quantity. Okay, so if you look at it, there is little bit of improvement in wasting, but look at the uh, underweight and stunting going up. Okay, this means that babies who are already malnourished in first six months, they are becoming much more malnourished because there is no proper support of uh, complementary feeding in this age group. Okay, so now you can see how uh, all your underweight as well as your stunting going up. Okay, uh, very, very crucial stage. We have seen many babies who grow beautifully on mother's milk till six months of age, but if mother is not supported on how to uh, give complementary food, uh, they become thin. 
you know they lose lot of weight and they become thin okay uh, and then let's go to one to two years of age now in one to two years of age what you see is basically now look at the stunting literally from uh, from zero to two months you had about 28 uh, percent now it's almost reaching to 40 percent okay that's significantly high number of stunting at uh, between one to two years of age this means that completely the failure of first year of uh, life uh, when it comes to IYCF okay IYCF is a your uh, maternal infant young child nutrition so not only maternal nutrition has gone wrong but uh, also your uh, breastfeeding has gone wrong and also your complementary feeding rate has gone up so it's basically ongoing chronic condition and that's when you see remarkable increase in stunting as the baby is getting stunted obviously baby's bones are small so now you have underweight also you know short babies always kind of weigh underweight unless a uh, child puts on a lot of fat okay so this is important that uh, you know uh, there is significant reduction or uh, I would say significant uh, increase in uh, stunting and underweight okay as stunting increases you can see wasting decreases okay now this uh, in my uh, my opinion is that as babies becoming shorter and shorter you know uh, your wasting is getting masked okay because that shorter baby does not need to have that much weight okay uh, to to not come under wasting graph okay so that's why this is uh, this is paradox as the stunting goes up your wasting comes down but this is masking of a wasting okay then comes your uh, two to three years of age in two to three years of age you can again see not much decrease in stunting uh, look at the underweight going up you know it has gone up now from 30 to 31 percent to almost uh, 34 percent okay uh, and again not much decrease in wasting uh, similarly in this graph you can see that uh, you know from three to uh, six years of age uh, actually five years of age three to five years of age uh, you can see pretty much the same uh, graph uh, again stunting and underweight uh, pretty high and then your uh, wasting is kind of uh, you know uh, lingering around uh, 16 to 17 percent okay so this age wise uh, uh, change uh, in your uh, underweight wasting and stunting is very important to understand because once you understand the uh, data you will understand the root cause and then you will be able to give the good solution okay so I'm going to come to another uh, bar graph uh, this is under nutrition in India according to residents residents in a sense urban or rural area okay so here uh, if you look at stunting data obviously stunting in uh, uh, you know your rural area is much higher than your uh, urban area okay uh, pretty much same thing for underweight also uh, wasting not much difference so in wasting your urban or rural has equal uh, number of uh, wasted children uh, underweight and stunting yes because of course as child is stunted child is going to be underweight because bones are small okay uh, this is uh, as per gender so as per gender you can see that uh, males are little bit higher uh, when it comes to stunting and underweight wasting is not much difference but little bit of just let just minor difference but again you know uh, males are at disadvantage you know uh, normally what you would see that you know uh, in India especially you will see girl children being more uh, you know uh, underweight and of course wasted and stunted but uh, it's na nature is protecting this girl child because eventually she is going to uh, bear a baby you know so she uh, she is protected not that I'm saying too much of protection but uh, it's probably nature's way of protecting a girl child okay uh, we need to work on all these indicators understand uh, the root cause understand the issue uh, and then we can definitely kind of understand the the uh, you know uh, solution and it will come come with uh, excellent results now this is another very good uh, uh, pie chart again undernutrition prevalence among children below 5 years of age okay so 
uh, say out of 100 percent about 47.8 percent are absolutely normal when it comes to wasting, stunting and uh, underweight. Okay. So, that is pretty low number actually you want almost 96 percent children uh, to be in this uh, category uh, all normal, but you have only 47.8 percent which is almost half. Okay. Uh, here what we have, uh, what we have done is basically we have seen, we have taken data of babies children under 5 years of age who are only stunted, okay, only stunted, no, no underweight and no uh, wasting also. You, so, you have about 15 percent children who are only stunted, uh, only wasted children, children who are only thin, wasting is thin, you know, child is thin, right. So, only uh, wasted children are about 6.5 percent, okay, uh, only underweight children are 2.3, so that is a very low number. Okay. Uh, generally underweight is usually associated with either wasting or stunting. Okay. Very rare to have uh, uh, you know underweight and this other children probably you know uh, might have just uh, uh, had one or the two uh, acute uh, infection and suddenly weight has gone down, but not gone down as much that it shows up on wasting graph. Okay. Uh, about uh, uh, there is 0 percent babies who are uh, only stunted and wasted, okay. So, 0 percent uh, in uh, that and uh, when it comes to uh, stunting and underweight, uh, the reason you have only 0 percent stunting and wasting because stunting and wasting is always associated with underweight. Okay. So, you want to remember that, that uh, whenever you have a stunted child and wasted child, child has to be underweight okay. and that is why it is showing 0 percent, uh, not if you do not include underweight. Okay. Uh, when you have a stunted child and underweight child, about 15 percent children are stunted and underweight. Okay. Now, this children uh, probably with a, uh, uh, SAM is masked because child is short and this child is short, uh, you know child is also underweight. Okay that significant number 15.5 percent children are stun, uh, stunted and underweight. Okay. Now, you have underweight and wasted. So, you have about 7.5 percent children who are underweight as well as wasted. Okay. So, these are the children probably uh, child is doing metabolically really well <laughs> means child has stunting, you know child, has, child does not have stunting, uh, but probably had some infection, you know lost some weight, acute weight you know uh, has become wasted and because child has lost weight, so it has become underweight also. So, about 7.5 percent children are wasted and underweight. Okay. And if you look at all the three indicators which include your stunting, wasting, underweight, you have about 5.2 percent children who have all three indicators and these are the children who are at very high risk of a uh, lot of complications okay. because you have this chronically malnourished child who is stunted now is becoming wasted. Okay. So, uh, of course, mortality also increases in this, this children okay, who are stunted and you are uh, wasted. Okay. So, this is another very important graph uh, which is uh, important to understand. Okay. Now, let us talk about the prevalence of stunting. Okay. Stunting means your child children are short. Okay. So, this is again uh, you have the graph of India in front of you. Uh, this is Bihar. So, you can see that in Bihar you have very high uh, stunting rate uh, almost you can look over here. Uh, this is your India stunting level which is about 36 percent, 36 percent children are uh, stunted in India. And uh, if you look at last few states, you can see Meghalaya, Bihar, Uttar Pradesh, Jharkhand, you know Dadra, Nagar, Haveli, uh, these are some of the states which are uh, kind of doing, even Gujarat in fact, if you look at Gujarat. Uh, Gujarat is doing worse uh, when it comes to uh, stunting level. Okay. And here again, this are all the states that we have shown. Here is your Meghalaya, this is your Bihar, you know, uh, uh, and this are uh, data which is showing more than 40 percent. Okay. And then uh, between 30 to 39 percent, uh, it is all your red zone. So, basically, pretty much the whole of India has more than 30 percent. Uh, you know, uh, stunting rate, which is significantly high. As I mentioned to you, we want only maybe 2 to 2.5 percent children 
who are uh, who, who should be or who may be less than uh, minus to standard deviation but instead of having 2.4 uh, to 2.5 percent children being stunted uh, we have uh, significantly you can see the whole of India is pretty much 30 percent and above okay uh, let's talk about underweight underweight is also uh, average underweight in India is about 32 percent but if you look at uh, all the states uh, you know again uh, pretty much the same uh, states that you know I mentioned for stunting which is your Bihar, Gujarat, Jharkhand, uh, Dadra, Nagar Haveli, Damandiu, you know uh, Maharashtra many many states are not doing uh, good compared to India. Of course India by itself is not doing well when you have 32% uh, underweight that's pretty significantly high actually okay. Uh, states which are doing reasonably well I would say reasonably well compared to India standard not necessarily for world standard. Uh, you have a couple of states uh, you know a uh, few states from northeast your Mizoram, Sikkim, Manipur. Uh, Puducherry is doing pretty pretty good compared to India okay and uh, also Arunachal Pradesh and Punjab. Uh, here you can see again pretty much uh, same you know uh, uh, st states uh, you can see red uh, all the red uh, areas are all uh, underweight about 30 percent okay. Uh, not that we want 20 to 29 percent uh, children underweight but you know just comparison to, uh, to India standard. Okay now this is wasting, wasting is acute malnutrition. So your SAM, MAM comes under wasting, okay, you're thin, like as per height, what is the weight of the child, okay. Uh, so again, if you look at it, uh, average uh, you know, wasting in India, it's about 19%, you know. Uh, so there are many states which are uh, worse than uh, India standard, okay. And that you, uh, you again see pretty much, you know, your Maharashtra, Gujarat, Bihar, Jharkhand, uh, Assam, Tilangana, you know, Dadar, Nagar Haveli, Daman and Dew. So, these are all basically not doing well. Here is your, uh, you know, again your red uh, areas. Uh, wasting is pretty significant. Now, suppose if child is doing very well, if child is growing well in terms of height and if suppose child uh, for a couple of days or few days hasn't eaten because of some uh, diarrhea pneumonia, uh, you definitely want to treat those infection but they come out pretty fast, okay. If their metabolism is very good, uh, you know they come out of infection very fast but what I saw in my program the children who were stunted already they were not growing well uh, you know they were chronically malnourished when they got diarrhea it got very difficult to bring the child uh, out of uh, wasting okay. So you want to make sure that you just you know that uh, longitudinal data is more important than the cross-sectional data in wasting okay. So cross-sectional means uh, you know you just measure uh, weight for height even say once once and tell uh, you know tell that oh this child is wasted. Uh, generally I prefer that we have a longitudinal uh, checkup so if child is growing well you know height child height wise child is growing well over a period of time. Uh, sometime when they have again infection they would get uh, thin they would lose weight uh, but again those children come out very fast when you treat the infections okay. So that's important. Uh, you can see some of the uh, economically advanced state are uh, quite red in color. So Maharashtra, Gujarat, you know, uh, some of those states are not, uh, I mean, you know, we did not expect uh, this children to be wasted. But again, uh, just looking at the wasting data, I, you know, uh, I, I won't comment, you know, we have to also look at uh, stunting. Uh, stunting in the states and stunting is also kind of high in both the states so both the states are not doing well as when it comes to child and child, child nutrition okay. Uh, now let's look at anemia uh, this is your urban area rural area uh, total anemia uh, any anemia so you have different kinds of anemia so any anemia almost 65 percent children are anemic okay uh, total um, of course higher in rural areas uh, and when you look at mild moderate and severe anemia uh, <clears throat> again uh, you know you have uh, basically almost 30 percent children who come into mild category uh, moderate category you have about uh, you know uh, 
uh, about 35% children in rural areas and about 32% children in uh, uh, urban areas and severe anemia almost 2-3% uh, children are severely anemic okay and total uh, any anemia means mild moderate severe so if you calculate all three of them together you know just randomly take any child who is uh, you know anemic uh, that number is significantly high okay. Uh, and unfortunately what happens when you are diagnosed with anemia and say uh, nine months to one year of age uh, those babies are already kind of have poor IQ because once you diagnose that means anemia has already kind of uh, caused impact on their brain okay because uh, you need good amount of oxygen uh, going to child's brain because brain is growing very fast so this one is really crucial that we prevent anemia okay not of course we have to treat this anemia children also but uh, again mother's milk and complementary food which is high in iron uh, the counseling is very very important for mothers okay uh, here you are looking at uh, anemia among children in India uh, according to gender so if you look at gender again you know uh, in young children up to five years of age uh, there is not much difference okay uh, this of course girl children are not menstruating so they're not losing uh, blood so this is all basically diet related anemias okay and um, here you can see both <coughs> boy and a girl child uh, almost 65 percent children are anemic okay not much difference gender wise uh, when you look at uh, you know the graph of India uh, this is again you can see almost 60% uh, children are anemic okay so we want to make sure that uh, you know we, we give uh, again nutrition counseling is very very important uh, six almost look at the 65% children are anemic Ladakh is almost reaching uh, 90 to 93 percent so Ladakh you know we need to kind of really intervene in Ladakh uh, Gujarat also a uh, lot of the states again same Dadra Nagar Haveli Damandiu you know there's all uh, uh, states you know that we can uh, basically work on uh, to improve anemia okay <coughs> Uh, this is status of key breastfeeding practices and FHS 5 so if you look at uh, uh, what are your breastfeeding indicators okay breastfeeding indicators is uh, early initiation of breastfeeding and your exclusive breastfeeding rate okay so you look at uh, uh, early initiation of breastfeeding now we know that uh, institution delivery has gone really high up you know um, on more than 90 percent deliveries occur in uh, institution institution but look at the number of children who are given breast milk uh, in the hospital within one hour okay very poor 40 percent only okay in urban maybe around 40 to 43 percent but rural areas is 40 so total comes out to 41 42 percent not more than that okay so here we can really improve this uh, any early initiation of breastfeeding you will see in one of my session that how that why early initiation is so important and what happens when you don't uh, give breast milk within one hour that colostrum is extremely important to develop good immunity gut microbiome okay uh, to prime that baby it's like you know when we take vaccine so when you vac when you vaccinate the baby, you you basically priming that baby for uh, infections in the, in the future, right? Similarly, when you give breast milk first thing immediately as soon as baby is born, that colostrum has um, you know a good bacteria of the mother. Uh, colostrum has human milk oligosaccharide, and that's going to stimulate baby's uh, immunity and it's going to fight infections not only immediately but lifelong. Okay, so very very crucial that you work on this early initiation of breastfeeding. Uh, another thing is ever breastfed child who received pre-lacteal feed means uh, babies who get say uh, something other than uh, breast milk. Okay, so a very significant number of children they get uh, uh, pre-lacteal feeds. Uh, you know you can see it. Uh, almost 20% uh, children are getting pre-lactal feeds which is something other than uh, breast milk okay uh, 
What is the status of key breastfeeding practices? Again, uh, if you look at the uh, uh, region wise, so all these areas, uh, you can see all this red uh, zone, uh, uh, only uh, early initiation of breastfeeding is uh, only between uh, 12 to uh, 40 percent, okay, uh, which is which is significantly poor. Uh, you can see in India, on only 42, 42 percent of children are getting early initiation of breastfeeding. Uh, many areas uh, they are have early initiation of breastfeeding. Uh, your Meghalaya has good amount of early initiation of breastfeeding. Lakshadweep, Odisha, you know Kerala, right? Uh, some of these areas like Jharkhand. Uttar Pradesh, Daman Diu, Dadar, Nagar Haveli, uh, Bihar, uh, these are the areas that we saw they are not doing well when it comes to uh, nutrition indicators and they are not even getting breast milk in first five, uh, first half an hour or so, you know, half an hour to one hour, okay. So you want to improve though in those states, you definitely want to improve your early initiation of breastfeeding. If you look at exclusive breastfeeding, uh, look at the exclusive breastfeeding rate in India is about 62, 60, 62. 3 to 64 percent, okay. Uh, many mothers, around 75 percent of the mothers, they start uh, exclusive breastfeeding. They want, they, they start with exclusive breastfeeding, but there is, ex, there is a breastfeeding failure. So, you can see the failure that as child is growing up, you know, the exclusive breastfeeding rate going down. This mothers means they are not getting support from healthcare workers on how to breastfeed. So, there is poor milk transfer. Uh, weight gain is not happening and then probably pediatricians are starting formulas. Many pediatricians they do start formulas right away. Uh, we have to also understand that uh, this is absolutely not needed. Uh, so, uh, this is also for pediatrician to please uh, kind of start uh, breastfeeding, exclusive breastfeeding at birth as well as up till 6 months of age. Okay, and again, not much difference when it comes to urban rural. A rural exclusive breastfeeding rate is a little bit higher than urban area. Uh, again, if you look at exclusive breastfeeding rate uh, in India, you know, uh, many states which are giving exclusive breastfeeding rate, uh, I mean, uh, exclusive breastfeeding to babies, but they're not doing well when it comes to nutrition indicators. Okay, so your Chhattisgarh, Dadar, Nagar Haveli, Damandiu, Jharkhand. Um, uh, you know, a MP, although they are giving a uh, good amount of exclusive breastfeeding rate, but your nutrition indicators are not good. That means the milk transfer is not occurring, okay. So, in my opinion, only looking at exclusive breastfeeding rate is not enough. You have to look at early, uh, effective and exclusive. So, I, I strongly believe in triple E, early, effective and exclusive breastfeeding rate, okay. Okay, now, uh, so other feeds, like what are the other feeds that children are getting, you know, so many of this, so your blue is your plain water, so many babies, almost uh, 4 to 5 percent babies are getting plain water, uh, uh, literally under 2 months of age, they are also getting non-milk liquid, so they are getting either honey, good tea or any of those. Okay, uh, uh, and other milk, which is probably a cow milk or formula, um, and your uh, complementary food. So many babies are being given complementary feeding in by less than two months of age. Okay, uh, you don't want all this thing because there is a high risk of uh, infection, and children will not grow well. Okay, uh, and as you can see, as child is growing older, uh, you know, your plain water intake is increasing, complementary feeding uh, rate is also increasing, your uh, other milk intake is also increasing. Okay, so this, this particular graph is very, very important. Okay, uh, status of complementary feeding, 6 to 8 months as per resident. So, again, uh, you know, uh, uh, around 52 percent children in urban areas are getting, uh, you know, uh, complementary feeding by 6 to 8 months of age and rural areas is much less, okay. Uh, this is about complementary feeding at 6 to 8 months. Uh, again, a lot of the states uh, in red zone are not getting uh, complementary uh, complement feeding by 6 to 8 months of age. So, the states need to improve remarkably. Uh, again, your UP, Rajasthan, Jharkhand, Bihar, you know, this, this states, uh, you know, states in the middle are not doing very well, okay. Uh, this is minimum acceptable diet. So, minimum acceptable diet is your uh, dietary diversity. 
your frequency and your both together is your minimum adequate diet. So again in India, breastfed babies and even non-breastfed babies, only 10 to 11 percent uh, babies are getting minimum adequate diet. That means enough frequency and enough dietary diversity. Okay, uh, so uh, can you imagine only 10 percent to 12 percent babies are getting proper complementary food uh, under you know two years of age. If these children don't get proper complementary food, believe me, they're going to become wasted. They're going to become underweight, stunted. Okay, so this is important. Uh, again, this is age-wise category of your minimum adequate diet. Uh, MAD, I'll focus on MAD, which is a minimum adequate diet, which includes your frequency as well as your dietary diversity. Okay, so very, very poor uh, uptake of uh, complementary feeding uh, up to two years of age. As you can see, uh, age-wise, it's pretty poor. Okay. Uh, thank you so much. As now we understood NFHS5 data very well. Uh, let's see what uh, um, in next session I'm going to talk about uh, what exactly we did uh, in urban slums and other areas of uh, uh, India to improve this uh, indicators in a small, of course, small program. But in those small programs, we learned a uh, lot of uh, you know loopholes and how to kind of come up with solutions to to manage this malnutrition among those underprivileged children, okay? Thank you.